Alrighty, had neighbors and welcome back to Cooking Companions. Last time we started on New Game Plus. And I have already decided to go for Karen again. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Here's scraping from the floor. The red woman won't let him live, will she? Too ravenous at this point. The more she consumes, the stronger she gets. At what cost? Heh. <laughs> Sometimes staying silent works better. Just walk away and pretend you're innocent later. Your prospective potato has provided. The chompettes would never listen to this crap. Fell asleep, thinking about what potato told you. You have a strange dream. I have those a lot, apparently. It's lying on the table in front of you. You have to get the glasses off first. Partially cracked and sit them down next to the workbench. When you saw you wrap the cuts in an old newspaper. Some of it gets soggy immediately, so you begin drying the cuts with the towel before wrapping. Much better. You hear something approaching, so you clench a fist and get ready to strike whatever's coming for you. We're making a cold sweat. Day 10. It's now day 11. Hello there. You wake in a completely different place. Did you sleepwalk or... You found some meat. Everybody's still asleep. It's very nice to rise up to yesterday's events. You decide to cook breakfast for everyone. Cutting each slice fairly thin. You brown each side in the oven. This feels unique. And that voice crack though. Karen runs into the kitchen. What is that smell? Give it to me. Now. You don't argue. Karen grabs cutlet, burning her hands before bringing it to her mouth. Ugh. He really devours it, barely chewing. She grabs another cutlet off the plate and eats it. He thought she was concerned about rationing. Gregor wakes up from the couch and heads to the kitchen. Oh god. Already? Gregor looks conflicted. When it succumbs to the hunger, they always do. Gregor eats his food in a few bites, carefully grabbing a second cutlet. The tears are streaming down his face, but it doesn't make a sound. He joins them in the meal, quickly consuming the meat on the table. I get things straight again. We'll be out of here in no time. No need to ration anything now. Karen is sounding more determined than ever. I, I'm gonna lay down on the couch, try to get this food down. Gregor crawls onto the couch and he's back to you. This is where we eat poison. Ken leans in to whisper. I'm glad Mariah and Anatoly are gone. They were stopping us from bonding properly. Properly. How'd you get so good at it? You tell Karen. After one bite, it just made me feel whole again. Even with the nightmares, it's worth it. It took a few nights, but I fought back. And now it's all I can think about. I read the book on necropsy. The text is ancient, but the diagrams are beautifully drawn. Very descriptive. How many years did it take for you to perfect the craft? You tell her. Yeah, right. I used to tell Mariah that you weren't funny, but that's not true. Sorry about that. You've grown on me. Karen pauses deep in thought. You know Gregor can't swim, right? Who will be the next to leave? But he doesn't stand a chance outside. They always seem to come back, right? One way or another. Why wait for him to come back? Karen hands you a vital liquid. I think you know what needs to be done next. He's a strong anesthetic. Don't ask me how I found it. I'm going to slip into Gregor's milk tonight. It's for the best. He won't feel any pain until he wakes up. All you have to do is stand back and let me work on him. The request is beyond extreme. Will you do this for me? Oh, I have another... Oh... I 
You just say nothing. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but I could just say nothing. I knew you would. Thank you. You nod. She's learning quickly. Looks like Karen will remember that. Hell yeah, full hearts. Best friends. Karen handed the vial of serious liquid and you added to Ruby's mug. Gregor, it's been a while since you had some water. Come drink with us. Uh. Gregor looks frightened. I can't stop thinking about the little guy. I can't even remember what happened before we arrived. It just never ends. I miss Anatoly and Mariah. That is toast to Anatoly and Mariah. They'll always be inside of us, Gregor. <laughs> it's still equally funny. I can't change that now. Gregor begins to weep. You're right. We're having it raw tonight, Gregor. What? Eating raw meat is one of life's greatest gambles. Get awfully sick, or... Gregor slowly puts the meat into his mouth, ignoring the smell. He swallows each bite in the woods on his face. I'm trying not to get sick. I'll never forget the first time I met Anatoly. We were kids. I was shoving firework... Fire... Wood. I was inside that... Why is firewood? I can't say that. It always becomes fireworks. And Anatoly brought over a butterfly net, filled with them. He introduced himself and asked me if I wanted to hold one of the butterflies. I had never held one before. He told me how to crush it between my large paws. He did have miniature hands himself, so I get it. Anatoly... And... Karen, what did you put in this water? Will you do anything to save your friends, Gregor? Of course. Gregor's eyes start to droop. What the hell was Karen's liquid? I think it's best to have an early bedtime tonight. Let me help you onto the couch, Gregor. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Gregor passes out cold. Thank you. I'll do the rest. Even if he screams, please ignore Gregor when he wakes up, okay? You don't want to end up Karen with this. You leave her alone, go into the bedroom and crawling into the bed Anatoly slept in. You fall asleep almost instantly. Day 11 becomes day 12. Wake up, sleepyhead. That is a new face. Very interesting. Great dislike. You were having a nightmare. Gregor is waiting for you. You get out of bed and follow Karen to the couch. Ooh, I equally dislike that one! Wow! Not a fan! Gregor. Hmm. Another interesting form. I think he's trying to speak. What is it, Gregor? You tell Karen that Gregor has died. He hasn't soiled yet. Or spoiled, sorry. Let me show you the rest of him. And Karen shuffles over to the basement door, opening the lock with a knife. My window's in the basement. To put the knife in her life. Explain how difficult it is to get blood out of wood. The laziness is unbelievable. The minute those four entered the cabin, you have to kill them all. You're getting soft. Your nurse so we can butcher back to health. What if she ends up killing you now? Where are you the key? She goes downstairs and locks the door behind her with a deadbolt. Don't let her rot. Karen, potato. I have made great allies in another life. You need to stop her before it's too late. You walk over to the basement door. Where's Karen? When are you fixing this hole? You feel her breath coming from, coming through the crack in the door. You block the basement door. No, but we have full hearts. What the hell are you doing? Goodbye, Karen. Bye. She just slips into the darkness. You climb onto the couch to rest. 
What if the basement noise has become silent? Day 12. Today 13. Mariah was correct. It's freezing over here. The frigid air swirls visibly in front of you. The basement noise has completely stopped. What do you want to do? Various books on a wide variety of topics. No time to read them now, though. Bookshelf. You take a closer look at the subjects. Cooking, herbalism, skinning. Books that are good for surviving the wilderness. Take another look at the subjects. Carpentry, metalworking, tailoring. Books that are good for crafting in the wilderness. Wasting time reading books? You're just browsing. Sure. Why don't I read this one? Who no knows one of the books? The edges of the pages are a little singed. This was saved from book burning. I wonder why. One may in truth proceed against such a man as against a person who is gravely suspect. But he is not to be condemned in the absence in his absence or without a hearing. And yet the suspicion may be very grave. And we cannot refrain from suspecting these people, for their frivolous assertions do certainly seem to affect the purity of the faith. For those are three kinds of suspicion, a light suspicion, a serious suspicion, and a grave suspicion. We take the singe book with you. I say your entire life has been a grave suspicion. It's a shame you never went to trial for anything. That would never happen. Carrying around a book would be burned, so you put it back. The rest of the books are boring. Go to the couch. That's a cobweb underneath. Thankfully, no spiders. Please, just clean your house. You know it's a child's toy. What does it get under here? Small wooden boat. That's weird. No ports anywhere near here. Funny. Look at this name engraved on it. Raziel. Maybe Brett would want this. Brett's not around right now. I have to hold on to it until the moment's right. I guess we'll go eat. Hmm? You decide to have a quick lunch on the table. She escaped! You wake in a cold sweat. Wake up, sleepyhead. <gasps> oh, oh. Wow. That was entirely new. I hated that one the most. Aside from the one where Gregor just had mouths for eyes, that's my least favorite. You were having a nightmare. Oh, wow. She's completely soaked. Are you wet in the bed? You feel underneath you. Gross. I must have broke a fever because there's sweat is everywhere. Don't worry, we can watch them in the basement. Just unlock the door. I'll make a day of it. You're not that slow with laundry. Come with me. I have something to show you. I should get up following Karen out of the bedroom. The basement door is already open. I'm hungry. I'll get something from the basement. Feel the cold presence of Karen behind you. Goodbye. Stop. Get one of the railing. You do so, feeling a slight push on your back. You got the presence leave. That was a close one. Karen will try anything in her power to kill you. Tread cautiously downstairs. Why are you helping me, Potato? Because I pity what you've become. You work your way down to the bottom of the stairs. Something is approaching. the gym scare right now. Please and thank you. Cool. Dots. It's Mariah. Can you hear me? I've been down here the entire time. It's so good to see you again. There's plenty of bread down here. Why are you saying anything? I'll never forgive you for what you did. 
who put Anatoly through hell. You desecrated my corpse. You gave them all that disgusting hunger. Gods. Oh, that's water under the bridge now. Anatoly's down here. Come have some bread with us. They always try this. Their anger concentrated near their grave. Leads to tricks and traps. You're not falling for this one. Why aren't you listening to me? There's bread down here, loaves of it. Fine. I'm gonna stop you from finding the others down here. One piece of advice. Beware of Karen. She's ill beyond repair. Gregor will try to talk you out of reaching the room. And until he will try to talk you into living in the cabin. And Karen will rip the flesh from your bones. We'll talk again. You feel Mariah leaving the staircase. You go deeper into the abyss. The walls down here, they are dirt and soot. Or do it. Something is approaching. Every time we get there, you hear the knocks at the door. Gregor? Oh, you can see him! Oh, I forgot to look for Mariah. That was my bad. Sorry. Hi, Gregor. I'm glad I found you. They're gonna stop outside. Is he getting bigger? I don't like that. Can you hear that knocking? Another trap. Everyone's upstairs and wants to leave. Mariah's worried sick about you. You told Gregor about speaking with Mariah. Kids can't lie to you, huh? You just stood there while Karen took my limbs, doing nothing. Are you frightened by her? If you won't come to the staircase with me, please turn on the lights when you reach the room. I want to see the look on your face when the light bulb turns on. Can you do that for me? You nod. <laughs> Thank you. You should let me lick the bowls clean. That's enough to keep him at bay. We'll meet again soon. Beware, Karen. Bye, Gregor. You feel Gregor leaving the staircase. You descend deeper into the abyss. The air pressure down here feels greater. You're getting closer to Karen with each step. Something is approaching. I don't like the slow zoom. The slow zoom is what makes me very unhappy. It should be Anatoly. No. Oh. I thought you'd still be offending off that glutton Gregor right now. Do I have about meeting with Gregor? No. I was gonna try to see if you wanted to pick onions with me. You shake your head. Guess there's no fool of you, huh? You survived this long, and now you'll need to fend off Karen. I can't tell if I'd rather have you or her sticking around down here. You must go and tell me where Karen is. Oh, she's just below us. I'm waiting to devour you. Karen's been practicing her butchering again. Maybe she'll start with your arms. Ah ha ha! Down here, the whispers told me about you. I can't even believe some of those things you've done. Worse than any war crime. So many whispers about those sorts of things. So many whispers down here. It ends at the bottom. Can might be alive down here. But you won't be. See you again soon! Bye, Anatoly! You feel Anatoly leaving the staircase. You hear your teeth and keep going. Your feet finally hit solid ground in the basement. Something doesn't feel right. Behind you. Behind you. You feel around the wall blindly and look at the light switch. Found you. Can't go stronger than you as of late. Consuming her friends has imbued her with rage. She's lost in the abyss, and nothing but death can end this madness. You're prepared for what comes next. You feel something creeping up in front of you. Hello! Hello! Cabbage, what are you- Cabbage! Cabbage! It took us forever to remove the rubble you put in the mussels. John Betts! Come out! Never fear, Onion is here. Like my cousin Cornbread says, I'll rise to 
the occasion. Raspberry! Sometimes Mary Raspberry. Well, let it chill them, Potato. They even moved on. Ah ha ha. Will you let us go? You shake your head. Someday, maybe. Shopettes. Cabbage! Cabbage! We can't allow Karen to take over the cabin. She's much worse than you, Stinky. You see what she did to Gregor? Unhinged. She's a cut above you right now. <laughs> yeah. Ha ha ha. You don't need our help with this. Just remember what she's done. Channel that anger. She's just like potato now, right? Still here, Cabbage. <laughs> ha ha ha. And as punishment for earlier, we're locking you in the room again, potato. No trumpet trial needed. You got company down here, potato. Oh. One of us should hide the key. That's enough. No need to twist the knife. <laughs> ha ha ha. Good luck. Trumpets. Let's help out. Trumpets get into position behind you. Ready for what's next. Feel around the wall blindly and look at the light switch. Found you. Let's end this. I didn't even stab you yet. What? You let the knife drop to the floor, holding Karen in a loving embrace. Max hearts, Max hearts, hell yeah. Love your pain, sorrow, and regret vanishes into thin air. It was Karen all along. Your soulmate has finally been found. We created a new life together, devouring hundreds of men, women, and children. The laws and governments are powerless to stop your wrath. All that oppose perish. You work together beautifully, making the world a terrible place for future generations. One day, Karen becomes ill. She calls you over to her deathbed between gasps of air. Her eyes are filled with terror, but it lessens once she sees you. I can't just say your name, but it can't come out. I love you. You nod, crying softly as she tightly grips your hand in fear. Her tears fall into her dress as the last of Karen's air escapes her lungs. Her hand slowly lets go of, lets go of yours, dropping to her side. You take the knife and wrap her hands around it, one in the middle of her chest. Karen. You are a true cooking companion. I'll tell you a story, but you promise not to laugh. I almost died when I was six. It was probably the coldest winter on record. My parents and I were snowed in. At first we had enough wood, but then ran out. My father. Before their wedding day, he chopped down one of the biggest trees in the forest. He spent months whittling it down, cutting the pieces carefully, measuring the armrests so they fit perfectly, setting it down so not even a splinter could come out. He named it a mother's chair, and every Saturday, he washed her feet while she sat in it. Whistling a tune his grandmother taught him, looking deeply into her eyes as he rubbed her ankles. It took him weeks of working on it in secret. He was hyperventilating when he dismantles it. Each heavy breath was a foggy cloud. His tears were freezing to his cheeks. The fire only lasted two days. And later the frostbite turned his fingertips completely black. He cried almost as hard over his fingers as he did that chair. After a while, when the food was running out, he began to search every inch of our cabin. But he finally found what he was looking for. A little mouse. While he had wiggling in his hands must have been painful. Between wincing, he divided it into two. One piece for me, and one for my mother. I was left for a big breakfast. His corpse was the first I'd ever seen that was frozen solid. Thank you for listening. Hmm? Cabbage! Look, he's trying to speak. 
<laughs> Cabbage. <laughs> Don't be shy. Try again. Might take a few more days. What do the jump bets turn up? Who's turn up? Was that us? Because potato was gone. I guess they just locked potato up forever. God, it the white is so bright. I can't even look at that. But I think there's everything. I think we went through all the modes. So I think Potato was the first killer. That were originally with the kids who would become the Chompettes. Because I think he... He got... Just... Decimated. And then Potato was... Gone. And then we had... Turnip. I don't think Turnip is Karen. Because... They said he. And they would always address the character as a he. Because I know Karen died. Or maybe the turnip was Gregor? Or Anatoly? I really don't know stuff. <laughs> because I think if Potato was gone, then everybody would be gone. So maybe Turnip is Karen. Because he wanted to keep Karen. But they said he. My confusion grows. You've unlocked Chompet Origins from the main menu. <laughs> <laughs> we already did, dude. It's our new game. Wee, Yay! Alrighty. That was Cooking Companions. Again, love the double entendre. Great. Um, I like how there's a lot of, like, different modes, so it feels like you're doing a lot more. And then most of it's just kind of hanging out. Uh, but yeah. I would definitely recommend to go through and pick the companion you like the most. For me, of course, it was Karen. But pick the guy you like the most. Hi, Antoli. With that, I'm gonna end cooking companions. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you later.